In this documentary, we look at the positive and negative effects of violence in the media. Children in particular are often exposed to violence in the media from a very young age. Professionals fear that this could damage the behaviour of younger generations. 56% of children ages 8 to 16 have a television in their rooms and children spend 81% of television time watching alone and unsupervised. A large number of surveys have found that 82% of people consider movies are too violent. Do you think the watershed is effective? In a way, sometimes it is because um, with younger children um, being put to bed for their parents and stuff, but also um, watershed like programs are like advertised during the day, so in a way, younger children do see what is later on, and also with children having TVs in their room, doesn't really make a difference. Do you think there should be a higher age restriction on violent video games? Um, it won't really make a difference because. Um, because people will order online and stuff and no one asks for ID or anything and, well, it's only virtual, it's not really realistic. Media violence is especially damaging to young children because they cannot easily tell the difference between real life and fantasy. Do you think the age restrictions on films and video games are effective? Sometimes they are, especially when purchasing them. I mean, I still get ID for, you know, trying to buy an 18 film, and I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> you know, I feel quite nice there. Um, no, but I do know that, you know, that when I was 12, I was able to get away with buying 15, you know, so, and I especially, you know, even if parents say, you know, you can buy stuff off the internet, and, you know, you don't have to show that you're 18 and above, and so many people just play it even under the age, and that's, like, one of the really big issues within the media today is people just play and watch stuff that isn't age appropriate. Do you think certain violent media products should not be available to children and teenagers? Um, I do think that some of the video games that, and stuff like that that have come out recently, you know, things like Call of Duty or Assassin's Creed, you know, who are, they are restricted to 18 year olds only, but you know, I know my next door neighbour, you know, they've got six year old twins who actually play those games. And I know that in myself, it's just not right because they're, uh, they're too young to know what kind of violence is really in that kind of manner because it's just, it went a bit a bit too far, you know, with people murdering other people and I just think it's a bit, it's just not right. So yes, I do think that some products shouldn't really be available to people of a younger age. It is estimated that by the age of 18, the average child will have viewed about 200,000 acts of violence on television. This is made even more shocking by the knowledge that media violence affects children by increasing aggressiveness and antisocial behaviour, increasing their fear of becoming victims, making them less sensitive to violence and to victims of violence, and by increasing their appetite for more violence. We talked to a secondary school psychology teacher to find their views on violence in the media. Uh, violence can um, be caused by the media, um, in particular I would say with video games um, and violent films, um, if they can become quite addictive, um, particularly for young children um, and boys, um, they find that quite stimulating, um, it's a release of their anger and their anxiety, um, so media can um, have a huge impact um, on, on people's violence. Um, I think young people are particularly attracted to violence in the media because um, for them it's, a, it's an outlet, it's something different, it's often quite stimulating and engaging for them. Um, particularly for boys um, and younger boys it does tend to be something that they are um, quite drawn to. Um, it's something that they look up to, so they might unfortunately see role models as people that are violent um, and aggressive, so it is attractive, um, certainly to younger boys. There are, however, some positive effects of violence in the media. For example, TV programmes like EastEnders often bring awareness to issues such as domestic violence. So I wanted to know, um, what do you think about using violence in the media? Do you think it attracts certain audiences? Um, yeah, no, I think it, I mean, it obviously, you know, it's a taboo area and an area that a lot of people don't experience, so I think it's always going to attract an audience, isn't it? It's like, audiences like to watch people in extreme situations, so I think it, 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 it does attract an audience. It attracts a certain kind of audience, I mean, some people, it will put off depending on how graphic it is. But yeah, I think sex and 
virus is all going to sell stuff. Do you think uh, some of the um, violent acts shown on television, for instance in EastEnders, which I know you've worked on, um, do you think that sometimes the more realistic ones, such as domestic violence, do you think that's a good thing to show on television because it perhaps brings light to it and makes it more known? I think it depends what your motive is. I think that, you know, sometimes it can be like a substitute for real drama, you know, that someone can, like, be violent or you can shoot a gun and there's the thought of that somehow makes it automatically more interesting when in fact it's quite a cheap trick. So I think there is a tendency, sometimes it's easier to almost like put something violent in and write something that's more true to the scene. But I think sometimes, it, as long as it feels real and truthful in the context of the story, it's useful. And if it is a story about domestic violence, you're, we have done that in the past, you're drawing attention to that as an issue. 